you want to obtain a sample to estimate a population proportion. At this point in time, you have no reasonable estimate for the population proportion. You would like to be 90% confident that your estimate is within 1.5% of the true population proportion. How large of a sample size is required? Right, so in other words, if you want to meet 90% confidence and a margin of error of 1.5%, how much data do you need to collect? Also notice that we have no reasonable estimate from previous research. So the formula that is standard for this is this. I'll be at a little big, but I'll size that down for us here. Now notice that there is a P and a Q in here, but we don't have a P, and therefore we cannot have a Q, because Q is always 1 minus P. So without a given P or a P from previous research that we're using as what we think it might be, uh, we can use this formula, but we have to realize that what we have to do is assume that P is 50, so 50 percent, 0.5 as a decimal, and therefore Q has to be also 50% or 0.5 as a decimal. In other words, P, the rate of favorable outcomes, we just assume is half, and the rate of unfavorable outcome, outcomes is also half, so 50-50, basically like flipping a coin. You know you're going to get heads or tails. You don't know if one is more equally likely than the other. If it's a fair coin, you assume they're equal, equally likely. In this case, we're just making a blind guess. So the other thing we can extract from the problem that goes into this formula is E, which is the margin of error, and that was given as 1.5%, so as a decimal, that would be 0 0.015. And the last thing we need here is the z-score, the critical value, which all of this, the z-squared, alpha half, all of that is uh, the critical value, which is a z-score, which has alpha half in uh, the right tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the confidence level, which was given in the problem as 90%, so 0.9 as a decimal, and we'll get alpha by subtracting the confidence level from 1. So 1 minus the confidence level is 0 0.10 or 10%, and half of alpha, since this is a two-tailed confidence interval, is just half of that. So now we have the area in each of the two tails under the standard normal curve. So now we can use that area to find the critical value, the z-score we were after in the first place. And to do that, we're going to start with the absolute value so that our result is positive. Then we're going to use norm.inverse or norm.inv to find the z-score. You can also use a z-table if you prefer. So the norm.inverse function requires the probability, which is the area in one tail. So we figured that out to be alpha half is 0 0.05. Then the mean for a z-score is always 0, and the standard deviation is always 1 for a z-score. Also make sure to close up all your parentheses and press enter. Now there is a specification here about rounding. It says do not round mid-calculation. However, use a critical value to three decimal places. So the one exception is that we can round the z-score to three decimal places. So I'm just going to change this rounded 1.645 and now we are ready to calculate our necessary sample size. So let's look at that formula again and we're going to take all the parts that we need for it. Let's see. So n equals, let's begin with a set of parentheses for the top and a set of parentheses for the bottom of the fraction. In the top we want z squared, so that's the critical value. My mouse is being really weird. I'm not purposely highlighting random things, but what I was trying to show you is that we're going to do z-squared, so I've clicked on my z-score, I'm going to raise that to the power of 2, then times p, 
n times q. So that's it for the top of my fraction. Now I'm going to go click in between the parentheses for the denominator of my fraction. And I just need e squared. So I'm going to click on my margin of error and raise that to the power of 2 as well. All right, and as always with estimating sample size, you cannot collect 3,600.694 pieces of information. You can, however, collect 3,006 pieces of information or 3,007 pieces of information. So which would be more appropriate? Now, normal mathematical rounding would tell us to round up to 3,007 in this case. So the choice is kind of obvious and easy. But I just want to always caution you that even if the number to the right of the decimal had been less than 5, I would still round up to 3,007 in this situation because it's sample size and you need to collect more than enough rather than not enough. So now we have our answer here. Let's go ahead and try it out. And that's that.